General aviation aircraft are among the safest and most reliable forms of transportation in the world. But like any machine, failures can happen. Your training is designed to introduce you to a variety of simulated systems and equipment malfunctions and give you the tools to cope with that rare occasion when a malfunction occurs. During your practical test, the examiner gives you up to three simulated systems and equipment malfunctions to test how you analyze the situation and to see if you take the appropriate action to resolve the problem. The list of possible systems and equipment malfunctions varies from a partial or complete engine failure to smoke or fire in the engine compartment. Typically, procedures for emergency situations can be found in your POH or AFM. However, it is impossible to cover every failure or malfunction. If your POH or AFM does not have procedures for a specific emergency, such as an asymmetrical flap extension, you must rely on previous experience, good judgment, and a knowledge of the manufacturer's published emergency procedures to form an appropriate plan of action. Remember, as in any emergency situation, your first priority is to fly the aircraft. You must remain calm, clearly assess the emergency, then respond quickly and accurately to fix the problem. While many emergency checklists are committed to memory because your response must be instantaneous, other situations are less critical. In this case, you have time to refer to the POH or AFM to determine the appropriate course of action. An example of an emergency that is typically not covered in a POH or AFM is the partial loss of engine power. The partial loss of power could be the result of any number of factors, including a mechanical breakage or stoppage of the throttle control, or even undetected ice. Depending on the degree of power loss and to what extent the performance of the aircraft has been compromised, you may have several different options regarding your course of action. If your aircraft is capable of maintaining altitude or climbing, you can continue your flight to the nearest suitable airport while monitoring engine instruments and looking out for an emergency landing site should the need arise. You should maintain at least best glide speed while you attempt to restore full power to the engine. This may include applying carburetor heat, readjusting the mixture, checking the fuel selector switch, checking the magneto switch, and making sure the primer is in and locked. If you are unable to restore power, continue flying until you reach a suitable landing site. If your performance is severely diminished, you may have no other choice than to execute an off-airport landing. You should follow the emergency landing checklist outlined in your aircraft POH. It's a good idea to discuss emergency procedures for a variety of possible situations with your flight instructor. Your instructor can help you develop guidelines for systems and equipment malfunctions that are not covered in your AFM or POH. Reviewing emergency procedures on a regular basis and repeated practice with your flight instructor will also help prepare you for a real system malfunction or failure. In the unlikely event of a systems or equipment malfunction, your preparation can be the difference between confusion and a favorable outcome.